Dracula and his new bride are on their way to Grimsley Village to spend their honeymoon at the Buzzard Bed and Breakfast. Looks like the current guests have stayed well past the checkout date. There's no mistaking Dracula's hearse as it flies by, using bat wing power, sporting a red D on the windows and Dracula's insignia curtain clips. Inside is the coffin lined with red and black suede. On the lid of the coffin is Dracula's family crest, flanked by silver vampire bats hanging on the edges of the coffin lid. With a shortage of young maidens in the area, they make a short stop for refreshments and are attended by their faithful raven butler, Belvedere, and wolf chauffeur, Farnsworth. The graveyard with its rows of tombs makes a perfect setting to enjoy the full moon rising as it casts its silvery light onto blankets of clouds. Dracula and his bride prefer to fly when traveling, which leaves the coffin free to transport necessities. In this case, a collapsible blood bar stocked with anything a blood-sucking creature would want. There's Dracula's Reserve, there's Chateau Vlad, Dracula's Kiss, Type O and Type AB blood. On tap is blood and hair of the dog beer, the latter being the chauffeur's favorite. The couple's favorite beverage is Belvedere's Blood Martini, garnished with a pickled eyeball. Looks like a couple of vampire friends have flown in to enjoy the refreshments. Nothing like an impromptu graveyard party at midnight. The hearse is made easy by the fact that it's a kit, and if you look at the picture in the upper right-hand corner, you can see what the assembled hearse looks like. And so I'm just going to walk you through um, with pictures how it fits together, uh, just to make it easier, because there are lots of bits and pieces. On the left side, um, you can see the center piece, that's the center bottom with the two sides that will fold up and you'll glue them in place, and you see this whole thing is tongue and groove. And then the next picture at the bottom, you will see another panel that ends up being the back panel for the driver's area. So uh, what you'll want to do is glue that in place first and then um, raise up the sides and glue those in place. Now the next thing is um, you see at the very top what, I kind of put these in numbered order, you can see in the left hand corner at the top, that's what uh, the three pieces I just talked about look like when they're all glued together. And then uh, number two, I just want to kind of show you um, a couple of things without gluing, without gluing things in place because uh, if you're going to do the lighting, which I'll show you later, it kind of works better to just have that area open. But I'm going to show you now because that way you'll know where these pieces go. So number two, there's another piece, um, a, a, a long uh, piece with two notches in it, and that's going to go right in the front. And uh, if you look at picture three, you can see it in place, but as I say there, just don't glue it yet. And then uh, number four is the bench where the driver sits, and it just sits right on top. Um, and so that again, you're just going to want to wait until uh, you, you do the lighting. Now if you're not going to do the lighting, then you know you can go ahead and put all the stuff together. Now these are the pieces that make up the wheels. And um, so you've got four wheels, there's two different size wheels, and then you've got two braces or I don't know, supports, I don't know what you would call it. And then you've got two dowels that um, are used to put the wheels on. Now one thing I want to mention in this picture, when I took the picture I kind of took it backwards. So um, the big wheels go in the back of the coach, and or the hearse, and the little wheels go in the front. But the little wheels go on the big loop in the support, and the big wheels go, uh, big wheels go on the small loop. So just think of it as little wheels, big loops, big wheels, little loops. Now you can see that I've painted all the pieces, and you'll notice that I don't have all those pieces assembled, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want you to put some of that in place, but I wanted you to see where it goes. Um, so I basically painted everything, uh, and you'll see a couple new pieces that you have not seen before. You see the top, which is right next to the part I said to put together, and then below that you can see the back doors and the frame uh, that the back doors fit in. The other thing that you don't see here is the dowels, and the reason you don't is I would suggest that you do not paint the dowels until you get you put the wheels in place. The reason is if you paint those dowels, the wood swells a little bit, and with the thickness of the paint, it is very difficult to put those wheels onto those dowels. So, um, and then if, if you if you try to slam them on there, they'll either break or you're going to strip the paint off anyway. So. I waited until I had that assembled and then I just went back in with the paintbrush and painted that dowel, those dowels. Now if you're going to do the lighting, you're going to have to do something to accommodate it. 
And of course, you'll want to hide all the stuff that goes with it, the batteries, the switches, all the wires. So if you look at the top picture there, you'll see that I have, uh, I first took a heavy duty hole punch and kind of punched a hole. And then um, I cut a slit with a big box cutter down to that hole. And then I took a piece of sandpaper and folded it in half so there was uh, rough edges on both sides and pulled it down through that and just sanded it until I got a slit that was big enough for the wires to slide down. And then if you look, to, look at the picture next to it, then you can see I've gone back in and, and painted and, and, and touched everything up so that that area looks good. The third picture, you can see how I have now um, pulled the wire and the, and the lantern through uh, the slit to the hole, and then I've glued that lantern in place on the sides. And of course, I've done that on both sides because I'm using lanterns on, on both, both parts of it. You'll also notice that I also added paper to that back part of the, um, of the front area of the carriage there, or the hearse. And then um, what I'm going to do in terms of the um, hiding all that is you can see now that that front little panel is glued in place. And now I can stuff all that stuff underneath what's going to be the seat. And then if you look at the furthest picture on the right at the bottom, I cut an ad additional chipboard panel. And that panel is not glued in place. It, it just covered with paper and I can slide that in and out and I cut at the depth of that area and the width of that area and uh, then you just can slide that thing in and out, in and out and uh, get to that, the, the switches so you can turn your lights on and off and then um, on the front I just kinda was thinking about okay how does this how do you drive this coach is it is it horses is it bats what is it so I finally decided to do the bat wings on the wheels and make it like it was a flying uh, hearse and so this gizmo that you see in the front is a steering wheel and it is glued to that little extra chipboard panel that I made. So when you pull that out, that steering wheel comes with it. And all that is is a dowel. Then I used a bale to attach it to the um, to the uh, that little panel. And you could use whatever you've got. Um, I just happen to have a bale, and they're easy to fold, and, and that worked. And then the, on the top, I just glued a wheel, a chipboard wheel that is tilted to uh, make it look like it is a. Um, is a driver's wheel and on the other side you can't see in this picture but I glued a spider charm in the center of that and it kind of hides um, you know the glue and it just kind of pretties up the steering wheel. Now before you put the top on the coach and the back uh, doors and the frame you're going to want to do your windows on the sides so that um, you have good access to the inside of the coach and you're also going to want to add whatever paper you want to add on the inside of the coach. And on the top um, right hand side, or left hand side, excuse me, what you see is a, it's a piece of plastic and, and it comes in sheets and it's made for windows. Um, and so I've cut it to size, cut it slightly bigger than that whole open window area. And um, I have a new collage sheet that goes along with this project and it has curtains on it that are sized for this hearse. And there's two curtains for each side of the main part and then there's a one curtain that is for the back door area. And I have put the curtains on what will be the back side of the window. And then to dress it up, I've used the Dracula insignia from the um, collage sheet to add that to each of the places where the curtain is uh, pulls up. And then what you see on the glass on the outside, what will be the outside of glass, I've used some rub-ons from my stash, two different ones, a little uh, scroll work or little frame and then a, a red D and I did that on both sides and once I got all that finished with the on the uh, glass or what's the faux glass then I glued that in place using um, E6000 and you'll notice also that I painted the whole thing black but once I got it together and I got to looking in it I was like I need some more color and so then I went in and painted just the sides the silver and then you've, because you've got that tongue and groove putting it together, it's really hard to mask that with, with paint. And, uh, you know, you could go and fill it with something and then sand it down, but that's very time consuming. So what I decided to do is just t take some uh, sticker trim and uh, trim out the area around the edges where the tongue and groove fit together. You'll notice if you look at the top, I also use a very thin strip of, um, of, uh, uh, of the same kind of sticker and I 
did that around the window on the inside because that way so what you're looking is the inside picture so that way as you look through the window and you see the curtain on the other side you're not going to see where it's glued on you're going to see the nice uh, trim that I put on is instead of that glue line at this point you should have your interior finished and um, it's time now to attach the frame and the doors now the pictures that you see there um, it doesn't show that that's been done but it should be at this step and I include these pictures just to give you make sure that you see how that fits in place and whether you want to put the roof on first and then put the uh, frame on or you want to put the frame on and then the roof on it doesn't matter they all fit together there isn't a order that it has to be done in so at this point I had already covered my roof with paper and I, I, I use the same paper inside the hearse and on the outside areas and you'll see better pictures of it when we get we get farther along you saw a picture of it um, a small picture of it when I was talking about putting the lighting in so um, I uh, painted the uh, the frame here the silver just like the side windows I had painted it black but again I went over the outside with silver and then the two doors I painted those with silver too and then if you cut that one smaller curtain that's on the collage sheet in half it will fit on each of the doors and again I use the um, the insignia uh, where the where the drapes are drawn up and I, don't, I didn't mention it on the last one but I put the uh, the insignia on both sides of the curtain so if you look inside you will see the insignia on on the inside of the curtains as well then I just use some little door handles or little I think they're really dollhouse things that are made for drawers for uh, furniture but I needed something really small and they have little handles on them and then I use some really mini hinges and those hinges are glued both to the um, frame and then to the doors and of course I'm using the same glass and trimming it out on the inside and trimming it out on the outside with the stickers just to make that all clean and framed and look nice and then of course the whole frame area Again, I've trimmed that with a larger, um, larger sticker strips on that. So I'll talk about the wheels. Um, depending on what you're doing to your coach, you will should decide when you want to put your wheels on. If you're if you're doing a lot of stuff where you're turning your coach upside down and and, and um, still assembling things, you, you know you you probably want to wait as long as you can to put the wheels on because they kind of get in the way, and then you can't put a lot of pressure on them if you're doing things. Um, so I, I would wait towards the end of of what you're doing now you could attach and, and that's what I did I attached I didn't put the wheels on but I did attach the the supports and I did put the dowels in place and so because it it didn't matter that you know I wasn't that wasn't really going to get in the way but um, but I would put the wheels themselves on at, at the last minute and you can see below I've got the wings on the wheels from the collage sheet and just little little discs of metal to just cover up where they connect to the wheels. And then the wheels, I did add the silver paint on the spokes. Um, and then again, as I pointed out before, you'll notice the big wheels in the back and the little wheels in the front, but it's the opposite for the supports. And that's what keeps the... Um, the the coach from looking jacked up because of the difference in the size of the wheel so in the front would be the big loop with the little wheel in the back would be the small loop with the large wheel now I'll talk a little bit more about the front of the coach and the top of the coach and the top picture there you can get a really good good view of what that looks like from the sides and the lights are turned on and if you look at the lights you know you've got that slit um, I just used a piece of decorative um, sticker and just kind of wrapped it around that area so that it kind of it, it's it's on the um, it's against that uh, the piece there the the side of of the coach or hearse but it's also kind of wrapped around the uh, light a little bit and that just hid that slit and then you also notice again like I did for the the main body of the coach I used more of those stickers to trim that out it looks better I think and then it covered up tongue and groove areas and whatnot and then um, if you look at the um, next picture you can get a front end view and to add more interest and to give the coach a little height I I used a chipboard scroll work and attached that to the front and then that's a bad it's actually rubber and um, I used my finger to apply some red paint to it just to jazz it up a little bit and then if you look again at that picture um, even though you're covering up all of the all the hardware that that runs the lights you need to do something about the wires that go down from the lights inside 
down into that area that's covered up by the panel that, that moves back and forth. So I, I got to look at this and I'm like, oh gosh, I can still see the wires. So I ended up t uh, cutting a piece of faux, um, faux uh, suede that I use, I'm going to use in the, in the uh, coffin area. And I just cut little strips and I glued them inside there to cover up those wires. And uh, the strips go from right underneath the bench to uh, right down uh, to where the, the, um, that panel slides in. You don't want it to go all the way down because then it'll block the panel going in and out. The very last thing I did was the feather decorations on the top of the, um, of the hearse. And basically it's a rondelle with the bead glued in place and then feathers glued into that. And because those things, you know, if, if you do anything, you're going to mess them up. So that was the absolute very last step that I did. And then also you can see in the pictures, you can see the, um, the bench, which is glued in place. And it is covered with uh, the faux red velvet or uh, suede. The coffin is also a chipboard kit, which makes, which makes it really easy. If you look at the upper left-hand corner, you can see it glued together. It's pretty, you'll look at it and you'll know exactly how to put it together. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I painted it black on the outside and, and inside, except for I knew for sure I was going to put um, the faux black paper on the bottom of the coffin, but I wasn't sure if I was going to do the inside. So a lot of times I just paint it all and then I've, everything's covered and if I change my mind then um, I don't have any I don't have to worry so I did end up cutting pieces for the entire inside of the coffin and on the lid I painted it black too and instead of the black I ended up using the red and um, in terms of covering the outside of the coffin I used uh, a 12 by 12 sheet of black uh, paneling and you can see a picture of that down uh, lower on in the left and um, I cut the strips as it looked on the paper where it looked like the, the, the planks were divided, but then I cut it again because the scale was still a little too big. So I cut out the planks and I cut them, out, uh, cut them down again. And then I covered the outside of the coffin lid and bottom with that paper. The only thing I did is I didn't go on the outside, I didn't go all the way to the top. I went within like a quarter of an inch of the top of the coffin. And then I trimmed it out with, again, uh, more of the sticker uh, strips and this time I uh, used some gold there and then I used some silver on the outside and the reason I didn't go all the way up with the paper is when I put the lid back on I don't want it hitting the paper and the lid isn't going to go all the way back on completely it's just going to sit you know like a quarter of an inch on top of the coffin after you put the bar in it um, so the, the the order of how I did this was I painted the coffin black all of it then I covered the outside of the coffin and lid with the wood paper. Then I lined the inside of the coffin with the faux suede paper. And that's the black. And then I lined the inside of the coffin lid with suede paper. And then on the outside of the coffin lid, you can see that there is some decorations. I have got uh, a crest that I painted. It's chipboard. You can see pictures of, of that at the top right-hand corner before I did anything to it. Painted that red, and or gold, excuse me. And then I uh, used the... Um, the crest from the collage sheet, the Dracula, and I put that on top. And then you can see there's the little bat charms. And they their arms, their, the bat wings kind of bend down, so that kind of worked nicely to hug the edge of the coffin lid. And then you see some decorative uh, silver trim, that's stickers too. If you don't have those stickers, you know, another option would be to use um, Dresden, some thin Dresden or decorative Dresden. That would look nice as well. And then you can see that inside of the coffin lid, I have attached two barrels, uh, beer barrels. And these are from the Happy Bat Tavern. If you did that project or you've seen that, that's from that collage sheet. And then I have a stool, and that is actually glued to the coffin lid. And it is glued a little bit in the back higher. It's not on the ground. It's just about a quarter of an inch up off the ground, and it's glued at an angle. And the reason for that is this thing is going to fit on top and the, the stool is going to fit right underneath the bar when you close this up. And if you, uh, if you glued it all the way down to the bottom of the back of the coffin, it, it would keep you from closing the lid. So it's, it's at an angle so that when you set the lid up, it's, the front of the stool is going to be touching the surface and the back is not. Now the stools, you'll see that a little bit later, but it's a kit too, and I've covered, painted silver, covered the uh, seat with the same kind of paper as the back, and then I've used bat stickers, they're kind of a felt sticker, dimensional, and I've 
put three of those around the edge of the stool just to you know jazz it up a little bit more. Then on the outside of the coffin bottom, you see that I've got these handles or poles, and those are just glued into place. So those would be like the handles that you would use to lift up and carry the coffins around. Now the main, main bar piece is constructed outside of the coffin and then attached in the coffin when it's done. And I started with a little chipboard kit that's uh, a little bookcase, and it was a perfect fit for inside this coffin. Except I did not use all of the shells because I needed a larger area on the bottom for the bottles that, that are in the, in the bar. So I painted all of that silver and then the inside back of the, um, the cabinet I used the black paint. And then I used another one of those suede bats at, at the top as you know decoration. And I uh, used some paint to make the eyes a little bit more red. And then you see a series of glasses on the top two shelves that are glued in place on top of those shelves. And then down below you see a bunch of red bottles. They, those red bottles, they come with a label on it, but it's really easy to scrape and soak that off. Um, and then I've covered it with all of the different um, labels that are in the collage sheet. You know, there's um, Dracula's Kiss and Chateau Vlad and uh, Dracula's Reserve, all that kind of stuff. And so I put all the labels on the bottle. And then you see that there are two pieces of chipboard that are covered with the red suede paper coming out from the bottom of that bar. Um, and those pieces are hinged together. The back piece is actually glued underneath the cabinet. And then the front piece is hinged to the back uh, back piece. And uh, that's how you get the long table. And in the front, you can see that there is a um, towel rack. And then I have the Dracula's bar towel. And that's also on the collage sheet. And then the picture on the right, you can see how that front piece folds up. And uh, so that's going to fold up. And then that's where the, 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 the um, and I'll, you'll see that later in another picture, where the stool will fit underneath that. So here are a little bit more details about the bar construction. Um, if you'll notice that the, um, I've, I've used the same picture again so that you see the whole bar while I'm talking about this. Um, if you look at that again, if you, if you tilt the, um, the, uh, the longer piece in the front of the, of the bar uh, counter surface, it doesn't go all the way to the bar. So the back piece that's exposed, you can glue things to that and they can stay there and it won't, it won't interfere uh, with anything closing. And then you can also glue some stuff on the front piece, but you have to be mindful of what is in your cabinet so that whatever you glue on the front isn't going to hit anything. It's not going to be too tall that it will hit something. So the case here, I've got the two napkins from the uh, collage sheet. Then I have got a glass full of the pickled, um, pickled eyeballs and uh, where it is located when you lift that front part up it doesn't hit anything in the cabinet but the flask that you see there the carafe with blood in it um, that if I can't glue that in place otherwise it would touch it would hit the bottles that are in the back the bottles of blood or whatnot and so I just store that in the coffin uh, on its own if you want to like pack this up um, to store it and then I've got a little bit more detail of how I put together the, the towel rack. I happen to have in my stash a long um, pin or whatever with these two square ends that were pretty thick. And because you want you need a bar of some kind and you need it, you need it to be um, held away from the edge of the of the counter surface. And so with having those those knobs at the end, I glued those knobs onto the front of the, the main piece and it kept it away far enough that I could use a jump ring, a set, set of jump rings, I used two so that the, the towel would face forward, um, that I could attach that with the jump ring and the jump ring, uh, I needed space for that to be in there. So that way it hung out. And then to make it, you know, jazz it up on the front side, I added a couple of uh, spider charms and I thought that looked cute. And then the next picture, you get a little bit more of a look of how when, when you fold that up, you're basically just, you're just hinging two pieces of chipboard together. I've got the measurements for you. The small piece is one inch, one and five eighths inches by one and three fourths inches. The one and three fourths is the width of the cabinet. Then the large piece is one and seven eighths by one and three fourths. And so you're just hinging those two together. I attach the hinges first to the chipboard, then add your paper because the paper will help keep the hinges in place. This is definitely 
both the towel rack and the uh, hinged table or uh, counter, both are a job for E6000. You need, you need really serious glue. Now, you could make this, the, the front part, the larger piece of the counter, you could make it longer. Because as you notice, when it folds up, it doesn't completely cover the whole area of the cabinet. But depending on the hinges you use, if you get it too long, it creates too much weight and it starts to sag. And so you got to depend on those hinges to hold it up. Now, if you have a pair of hinges that only bend one way up, then you can accommodate a longer, a longer counter. But in the case of these hinges, they go both ways. So I'm relying on the stiffness of the hinge to hold that counter in place. Another option too is you could always just have a kick, th a kick thing that comes out um, that just sits underneath it to support it. That was another option I thought about too, but it ended up uh, staying up on its own. So that's something to consider. Um, and then the last picture there, you can see the uh, where I have now glued the bar piece into the coffin. Coffin is really deep, so it's it's really nice to accommodate something like this. And you'll notice the lid, I, I'm kind of holding this open while I take the picture with a, a bottle of glue, but you can see how that seat is going to just slide right underneath the bar when you close the coffin lid. Now looking at the finished scene of the bar area, you can see moving from left to right, you've got Dracula. And if you look at his feet below, what I've done in order to, for the characters to be able to stand up is I've just added a piece of wood painted black. And then you see the larger bench, which is decorated exactly like the smaller one. And if you look to the far right, you can see uh, Belvedere, the uh, crow butler, his leg is glued to the back of that stool, so that's how he stands up. And I always add either heavy cardstock or chipboard to my characters because that makes them stiff enough that they can stand up. And then if you look on the table, you see um, Belvedere's specialty, the blood martini with the pickled eyeballs in it. And the pickled eyeball is nothing but a, a, a pearl bead. And then I took a really small pin and, and threaded it on the pin. And I snipped a little bit off of the end because it was a little too long. And then I just put a paint a daub of, of black paint at, for the, uh, the iris of the eyeball. And then you see a couple coasters and a glass that I use some alcohol ink to, uh, to make it black. Then you see Dracula's bride uh, standing next to him. Same thing, you've got the block of wood at the bottom. You've got the, the bar, and we've gone through the stuff in that. And then, of course, you've got the, the front of the, or the coffin lid, or the inside of it. And you've got the, the driver there, and he's holding um, the martini glass from the collage sheet. And in his other hand, he's got one of the pickled eyeballs. And to make him sit up, what I did is if you, if you do two, two copies of him, you could, well, it's a couple different ways. You could, you could either put wood behind him, too, or you could um, you, you print a flip version of the, the, uh, the, the wolf and then uh, put something in between the two versions so that they're separated. And that separation of distance allows that to sit in place. Now, I didn't do anything permanent because I didn't, couldn't decide if I wanted him sitting at the bar or I wanted him sitting in the front at the coach. And you'll notice his arms are out, and that way you can you can do what you want. You can have him holding stuff, or you can have him at the wheel, holding the wheel and steering. Or if you decided you wanted to put a horse in front of it, you could have reins in his hand, so it will work either way. Um, at the top of the coffins, you see two bats, and, and those are the two uh, additional vampires that are flying in. And uh, there is a new collage sheet. It's a half sheet, and actually, for the next two days... Um, the Alpha Sam's is offering that free uh, with a purchase from them, but uh, that has all kinds of different bats. I, I think there's like 23 bats or something on it, different ones. There's a couple of repeats, but most are, are unique and a couple of bat heads. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and the project. And of course, as always, if that's not your thing, hopefully you uh, got some tips or tricks or ideas on how any of this can be useful in your projects. Um, this is my last Halloween project for 2016, so I'm going to be moving on to other themes, so you'll want to stay tuned. If you want more information in terms of products, uh, the collage sheets, you need to look at more pictures, you're, wanna gonna, you're going to want to go over to my blog. Um, if you're on YouTube, you will find the link to my blog for this post, this project post, in that area. If you're on my blog, then you're already there. As usual, Alpha Stamps is carrying all the products I used with just a couple of exceptions. So stay tuned. 
for my next projects.